Control 1022. Respect. Responsibility. Ownership. Community. And empathy. Those are the five core principles of the Building Block Program that should be spread to everyone. Prison can just be dark. Prison will kind of get you at your lowest. Us coming from broken homes and broken families and just not really having too many people believing and caring us. You have the people you talk to and the people you don't. Then there's this dynamic of us versus them between inmates and staff. And then when you enter into the program, it allows you to get your head out of that dark period of your life. The Build a Block program is something that's so different because it gives you a space inside the penitentiary that's a positive environment. Well, the goal wasn't to create better behaved inmates. It was to help men become better men, better versions of themselves, the men that they were supposed to become in the beginning. This goes against what I learned coming up through the ranks, but we're seeing a lot of success. Discipline is unbelievably down with the building block wings. Guys that are maybe not in the program any longer for whatever reason, their discipline is even down significantly because of being in the program. Staff seem to be more excited to come to work. You can see the change. We see it every day. So it's going to take a community right. Right, that, right. Is, that is constructed right, right. in order to build up the character of individuals. It gives guys hope. Broken boys becoming better men. It gives someone a passion if they never had one. It gives somebody hope for the future. The moment they come on the wing, that it's our program. So the minute you understand that it's ours, you want to take care of it. And that's a huge part of this. Well, these are our training grounds right here. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. The building block is, it's positive change for these guys. I believe that it gives them opportunity and reasons to believe in themselves knowing that there are possibilities other than violence, doing the wrong things. It, the little stuff turns into big stuff. So it makes you a little nervous. I'm the what if guy. If we implement this program, what's gonna happen? Something bad would happen on the wing, a fight or whatever. I would refer to it as the crumbling block. It took a little bit, a little bit of adjustment for us in our approach on how we're doing things. You get used to, okay, these guys come out at this time and they lock up at this time, and now we're letting them out so they can get in a group and have a conversation about anger management, parenting, financial. You know, the main focus is we want these guys to go home and not come back. I'm, I'm really surprised at the success of this program, how big it's gotten and how successful. This young man, was he was in trouble all the time. Phone issues, double trays, nothing, you know, big, but he was always in trouble. And he has made a drastic transformation. They, they thought um, I wasn't going to make it on the building block because of the things I was doing. And a lot of people, they want to be a part of once they see I can change. And I put my leadership for it, they wanna, and they want to be able to change too. It's now, as we know it, the building block. But it originally started as just an idea for one deck to just have something that no other deck had. You're trying to make changes in your life and you're saying all the right things, but then where do you get to really practice it? Where do you get to try it out? There's a lot of fear that goes in that because you're confronted with a lot of opposition to what you're trying to be or who you're trying to be. So what if we could create an environment that was accepting of that? Each one of these principles you'll see here, and it's representative of a particular culture, and each culture and what they've kind of given back to society. So each panel describes the culture. So for Asian culture, we had, we had empathy. 
And then on the other side, we have kindness. And some of the things that they've given to society um, culturally is represented on the wall. And it goes all the way down to the truck, which is the focal point, which is kind of that pure American culture of a second chance with the restoration garage. The ownership of the wing is something that I didn't really expect. The vast majority of the guys on the wing didn't care what the wing looked like. They would throw trash on the wing. They'd peel paint. They'd write things. In society, you know, wherever they lived, they didn't care about where they lived. They didn't care about their neighborhood. A lot of guys just cared about themselves. These wings are the first time that they have realized that their actions affect someone else. How many people down the road it, it affects. It's been an eye opener to them. Telling a grown man to believe in himself, painting it on the wall, you know, it might seem like something that's not necessary, but it's, it's impactful because people actually see that on a daily basis, two, three, four, five times a day for six months, a year, or two years, three years, and it begins to take root. They begin to, you know, not only just read them, but try to live up to them. It's a mentor-driven program. The guys come up with their own programming on the wings. They have their core values, and then, of course, they have the basic classes that they teach, like building block basics, effective communication, things like that. The original name of the program actually was the Compliance Wing. And so when we originally wrote the actual blueprint for the program, I started looking at the orientation manual and I looked and said, hey, we're actually required to make the beds up. I saw all the things that are actually the Illinois Department of Correction rules and guidelines that's already crystal clear. I said, let me put this in a proposal. Hey, what if we follow the rules? And so even though people think it's genius, this actually was already there, right? Nothing new under the sun. The blockers are chosen to speak a message of hope. And despite what people think, the Building Block Program is not a prison program. It is a life-changing program. If given the opportunity, it will change your life. If you don't believe me, check these guys out. If you don't believe me, check out the Educational Department in Danville Correctional Center. The Correctional Department staff is working hand in hand with the offenders in this facility, and they're making a difference. Please give yourself some love. When I first heard about the building block, I was at a point in my life where a decision had to be made. The reality I was facing was, yeah, I got a lot of time to do it. But the question was, what am I do with it? It's rewarding for me to see younger men be able to grasp what it is that I'm trying to share with them. You just keep pressing on and keep pressing on, then finally you see that light click on. That is very rewarding. People that's incarcerated, 90, close to 97% are going back home. And guys gotta be prepared for that moment to go back home and be able to be uh, law-abiding citizens. You can have like those aha moments. You know, I've had conversations where it's like, you know, hey, I talk to my son's mother now with those communication skills that we learned here and I can see my son now. So by me not believing in myself, I didn't care about life. So when I first came to the building block, it didn't work out for me. I got high off people saying, oh, he's a bad guy. I got high off, oh man, you know, stay clear of that guy. I finally said, you know what, let me give this a try. And me being mentored have given me the opportunity to see me for who I am. And also I'm able to mentor my own daughter. I want to make my mother proud. I want to make my father proud. You know, I want to be someone my daughter actually wants advice from. I see not only life different, but I see individuals different. I, I value people's lives different, and I see value in other people. You know, I've been on the block for over a year now. It was kind of hard for me to get into the program at first. You know, having 27 years straight to do and, uh, and almost done, it's helped change me so much because I'm going out there with grandkids and, you know, boys that's in the house, you know, and different things. So it's helped me be able to like look at them and understand the responsibility that I have and like how it hurts them if I leave again. To me personally, the vision is the future. It's, it's not this momentary thing that's going on, it's that guys can leave here with skills, you know, so they don't have to come back to prison. Yeah, 
does a building block actually work? You can't force them. You have to be willing to take the tools and use them. You have to be willing to change yourself. And we have lots of them that do do it. It betters the offender situation. It betters our situation. It's a much better situation for everybody involved. Believe it or not, the Building Block program, I think, is the byproduct of the Global Leadership Summit. You might say, I'm not really a leader. Leadership is never about title or position. Leadership is simply influence. People don't think about those little seeds. We've been neighbors to Danville Correctional Center for now over 35 years. I would drive by Danville Correctional Center. There probably wasn't a lot of time I really gave thought to what was happening there. And we had absolutely no relationship with the prison. We became very convicted by that. The conversation started as, well, what can we do as a church to serve what you're doing there? How can we help? My heart really changed for what was happening there and doors just began to open. And this is what building block is consist of, is pruning, cutting, clipping, and reminding people, man, that despite who you are, where you started, you can finish as a winner. By May of 2016, we had approval to do it, and we launched our first GLS at Danville Correctional Center. I don't think we realized it was actually the first prison in Illinois to host the Global Leadership Summit. The information that the mentors and facilitators obtain from the Global Leadership Summit, we then take it out to the building block and create classes. Like everybody took it back to the wing and they, they start you know, doing their research. And so guys start embracing those things. They just want information. They want the knowledge to be part of something that's global, to be part of something that's happening on the outside. It, it's really important to them. If you have a vision that everybody believes in, it's too small for you. TDJ talked about having a dream big enough that will shake everybody to its core. It caught a vision in me to create a class called Purpose. A lot of people in and out of prison, they kind of just get in that rut. But once you can catch your purpose for your life, you could be a garbage picker or you could be a surgeon, a brain surgeon. But if that's been your purpose that you're living out in life, you'll live, a, to me, a fulfilling life. If I want forgiveness for my past, then I should be able to give somebody else a second chance. You know, I should, I, should, I should be able to have those same things that I want, I understand somebody else wants. To actually say, hey man, I believe in you. That goes a long way. I chase character now, I'm building character. Character is what's gonna keep me in my daughter's life, not reputation. Like how about starting that trend where people leave Danville building block and they get jobs, they get education, they're changing the world, they're becoming mentors, they're on, on stages like the Global Leadership Summit. They're starting mentoring programs, they're doing things like that because of the experience that they have in Danville Building Block.